Okay. All right, sorry folks, for anyone who has already been on here and uh, is waiting patiently for me, I apologize. I love technology, except when technology doesn't work. Uh, so for those of you who don't know me, I'm Amy Talbot. I'm the Pamper Chef Consultant here in Scarborough, uh, here to help you in wherever you live with whatever you might need to be struggling with right now. Um, I am here with my uh, sidekick, Bristol, who you will notice throughout the videos he is now being bribed with treats he used to willingly come on these events and now he seems to need treats uh though i guess who doesn't um okay so today's recipe that i'm cooking is from our taste buds subscription so a little bit about what taste buds is this is a monthly subscription you can do one month and try it and decide if you or your family likes it. You can do a three months, a six month, or a year subscription. Um, I, as a consultant, have obviously been trying it out for a year. I have gotten four months free so far. Uh, I am loving them. Do I like all recipes? Absolutely not, as any of us don't. I love to modify, uh, for those of you who do know me. I'm more of a baker than a cook. Obviously, I like to eat, but I also do will and can make adjustments to all of them. So the first uh, recipe that I am going to be cooking, so I'm going to start doing these weekly uh, with the pandemic once again, uh, bringing us to our knees, uh, numbers rising, and the fact that we uh, can't go uh, unless you're an essential service or asking us to stay home. Uh, a lot of people are homeschooling, uh, multiple people working from home and or using the Wi-Fi, which is again why I had a little bit of issue, so I apologize. Um, so at my house, I've got a child who goes away to school. Uh, she's in third year, so she stayed in Montreal. I have another one who lived in residence at, in London who is now back home until at least the end of February. So my family has kind of grown and changed. Um, and we also have different dietary restrictions in the house. And we also have different tastes in the house, as most of us do. So what I love about the taste buds is just that, is the fact that I can modify the recipe accordingly. I can omit or add accordingly. In today's recipe, I'm gonna be adding a few things that are a little bit different. Also, Different from the first lockdown where we were out of yeast, we couldn't find eggs, and there was a huge run on toilet paper. Um, there were some things that we were doing differently in recipes, having to make the modifications. Some of us don't have to do that anymore. There are and seem to be the uh, shelves are significantly stocked. But we all don't have everything in the house that you may need. Well, here's where Taste Buds comes in. So I'm going to show you a little bit about what it is before we actually start the recipe. So this is a subscription that will come magically to your door with three recipe cards. Okay. So for example, salmon salad, another one would be onion burger. And then the one that we're going to do today is called pasta with veggies. Okay, it also comes with the seasoning that you are going to need in order to do these recipes. The other thing that they do that I really like and I think is quite handy is the fourth card actually gives you great ways to alternatively use the spices. It also gives on each recipe card alternate uh, toppings, alternate, um, for example, meat options or non-meat options. It also gives options for vegan, so plant-based diets. For um, any of us who uh, you know, are gluten intolerant, then we would just make those adjustments accordingly. So this is why I absolutely love it. And I know, uh, like a lot of you, I am also feeling stagnant. I'm, I'm cooking the same thing. Summertime seemed to be a little bit easy because you could just, we were tossing things on the barbecue. Well, we're back in the house and we're back in the house 
Uh, I hope this deep freeze doesn't come that, that Manitoba's getting this vortex that's come. Manitoba's getting a vortex in the next couple days. God help us here in Ontario if we get it. But if we do and we're staying in the house and we're hunkered down the way that we're supposed to, these are some great hearty recipes accordingly. And they all come each and every month to your door in an envelope all ready to go. So like I said to you, I am going to do the pasta with vegetables. So we're going to start it and then throughout I'm going to show you some tools, some of the tools that I've used to help, uh, maybe some behind the scenes to get ready for this, and also some tools that I use on the daily uh, as does my family. Um, okay, so first things that I normally do the way that I cook and in any recipe that I do is I like to prep. So I kind of like to have all my stuff kind of here and on the counter uh, so that when I start cooking, it's just good to go. Not everybody does that and doesn't make you right and me wrong. It just makes us different. It's just who I am. So I've got everything kind of around me and I am making a few adjustments to this recipe and I just want to let you know. So the first thing we're going to start off with, and I'm going to probably move the camera just so you can see a bit more on the stove top, is this is our 12 inch wok. So this is the 12 inch wok non-stick. Okay? So non-stick being that uh, it's stainless steel and non-stick so it can do high heat or low heat and nothing's going to stain it and easily you can clean it and with the, um, the finish in it you can also use an abrasive uh, clean, uh, cleaner or, and or scrubber. So I'm just going to put that on. Now we also do have this pan as well in a uh, 12 inch regular pan and a 12, uh, 10 inch pan with the stainless steel non-stick. And what's great about that is, like I said, you can use high heat or you can just use uh, regular heat. And that's what I do love about it. Uh, and I, what I love about the wok is just the depth of it. And because this dish is a pasta dish, I find it works a lot better to actually have the deep dishes going on. So the first thing that we need to do is, um, we need to heat the oil, and as I just told you, I like to be prepared. I forgot to take the oil out, so pause for a moment. Talk amongst yourselves while I grab my oil. Thankfully, very easily to grab. So, I'm just gonna add one teaspoon of oil into the pan, and I'm gonna start cooking the carrots. Now, normally I would, omit the carrots in this recipe. First time I made it, I did omit the carrots, only because I'm not a huge fan of carrots in my pasta. And I'm gonna also say, one of the veggies in here, my very good friend, Carol Upford, I know you're probably, if you're not watching live, you will be watching, does not like peas. So she will be omitting the peas. Um, and that's okay too, because what I am going to do is I'm going to add an extra veggie that I love. So while the carrots, uh, this was just, this recipe just called for um, two medium carrots peeled and thinly sliced. So I did use my veggie peeler, absolutely love it. This is um, the newer version, so for those of you who are, um, loving Temper Chef and have been diehards for 20 plus years, your peeler will be silver all the way down. Identical in the sense of the tool itself and how it works, but it's just got this uh, more modern handle and more comfy. I love it. My sister hates it. She likes her old one. I don't know. We each kind of have our own thing. So I've got the carrots going into the bottom of the pan. Okay, I'm going to leave the lid off for now. We're not going to need the lid. Throughout the recipe, if anybody has any questions, throw them up. Um, and I'm going to give you a few more uh, things going on. I think there might be some comments on here. Yes, there's Barb. Yes, 
Uh, one of the questions is, does Pampered Chef have cast iron pans? Andrew, oh, it's Andrew. Hello, Andrew. Yes, we do. We have beautiful cast iron pans. In fact, this recipe, if you do not have a skillet, this skillet or a wok of any kind, you could also use a cast iron. Um, and I'm just going to quickly show you the cast iron. That's a great question. Our cast iron comes in a medium version. We have the large version. These are traditional. We have the little baby ones. They're coming in a two pack, so you can make little desserts with them. We also have a beautiful uh, enamel. So this is the enamel. So the finish is beautiful. It goes from table, it goes from stove top to the table. Very good for presentations. Would I put this one on the barbecue? No, I personally would use the black, the old, the, the original cast iron onto the barbecue, but all of them can go stovetop, oven, barbecue. This one, because it's so pretty, I wouldn't put it on the barbecue. These are also freezer safe and microwave safe, just an FYI. Uh, I will also let you know that our, all of our pans, whether it be the wok, the frying pan, the pots and pans, cast iron, are also in that where they are lifetime guarantee. You can come to me 10 years from now and say, listen, I've, I've chipped it, it's cracked, the finish is coming off, no questions asked, I'm gonna get that replaced for you. And that was actually one of the very first things I did for my cousin when I joined the company, is she had pots and pans and she was having an issue with her finish and I got that replaced. So while the carrots are in here, we're letting them cook until tender, about three minutes, and then we're adding tomatoes. So I just picked up the blended tomatoes. I love these because of the multicolored. So I'm just gonna toss these in, and I'm gonna saute them for about 30 seconds is all it's saying. So I'm just gonna toss in, it said one cup. So I'm just gonna kinda toss them in because I do like tomatoes in my pasta. Um, so again, I normally wouldn't put the carrots in here, but I have a child who's home. Did I mention that? Yeah, the child who's home is so picky with veggies that she's not going to eat the tomatoes in here. She's not going to eat the peas in here. She's with you, Carol. But And she's not going to eat the mushrooms that I'm going to toss in as a bonus. And so because of that, I thought, well, at least I have to have the carrots so the child will eat the carrots. So I did add the carrots. I've added the tomatoes. Now, this recipe calls for a green onion. And yesterday, when I was dropping my car at the dealership and picking up the last minute stuff I needed to do for this recipe, did I remember the green onion? I absolutely did not. So I am going to add what I have in the house. So I'm gonna add a sweet, a half of a sweet onion. So this is of the Vidalia onion. It's probably going to change the flavor of the recipe a tiny bit. Who's going to know? No one. And I'm okay with that. So I'm just going to add a half of an onion. And again, it's just going to enlighten the flavor of and heighten the flavor of the veggies that are cooking currently. Okay, this recipe is super simple. Okay, so for those who are working from home, or like my friend Andrew, who I just mentioned about the cast iron, Andrew actually does have to go into the office. So, still very busy, whether you are home or not home, you are still managing and juggling a lot of things, and we just need to eat. And I don't know about any of you, but there are humans in my life who get angry if it doesn't come on fast enough. I too have a husband who's downstairs working at all hours of the day, just the type of job he has. And because of his uh, hours, there are most times that he is on a different time zone talking to a, a customer or a client on a different time zone. So we eat at all times. And because of that, I want a dish that A, I can prepare easily, or B, that I can prepare right now at 1.17 and anyone can eat it when they are hungry. So that's what I love about the taste buds. 
that's what I love about it is that it's simple recipes that families can use. For those of you who are homeschooling, great math skills, great opportunity to get your kids into the kitchen, allowing your kids to take the envelope and get as excited, opening up to see what the recipes are for the month. I love that. It's, it's a small thing that helps me too. So I've added the tomatoes, the peas, the green onion. Oh, I'm adding the peas. So I've added one cup of peas. These are our silicone bowls that I love. Um, this is the one cup. It's, you can't see it unfortunately here, but right here on the end where the spout is, it actually has for me to be able to see from this direction, the measurements. So I love the fact that I can use this as an alternative measuring cup, but that I can uh, store in it. These also come in a six, or sorry, before I go to that, so the silicone can go in the oven, the microwave, um, which is great. They can also go into the freezer. So this comes as a one cup, two cup, and a four cup. And the three set has a lid on it, which is fabulous. Um, they all have lids. They all stack here for me in my kitchen. It's awesome. But what I love about them is that they have now come up with this one cup. They're in a gray color. They're beautiful, very modern with a lid. I would show you, but they're all in the freezer. I pureed pumpkins from Halloween in my heated cooking blender, took the uh, pumpkin puree and froze them individually in these cups. So when I do wanna make a pumpkin muffin or I wanna make some pumpkin soup, or I wanna add the pumpkin to a sauce to just thicken it up and add an extra veggie, I can just pop it right out uh, and, and warm it right into the pan, or I can just take this whole bowl and microwave it. So these are amazing. They also come in a wee little tiny one. This is a half cup. You know, anybody who is a new mom, anybody with toddlers, these are really great because again, it's pre-measured as a half a cup. They come with a wee little lid. Great for uh, homemade baby food where you can pre-portion and chuck those into the freezer. Again, popping it out, putting it into the bag frozen so you can make a head or you just take it with you and it's great. They're dishwasher safe, uh, as well as being, like I said, microwave and oven safe, so it's awesome. So in the pan here, you can see, I've got the peas, I've got the onions, I've got the tomatoes, and I've got carrots. That's the other veggie I have in there. And all I'm gonna do is stir in the white wine that I am gonna use. It is an option. According to the recipe, now I am of the, the understanding where I like to use and don't like to waste. So I didn't have any white wine per se in my fridge. I didn't really want to open a bottle because it's white. If it was red, you didn't have to twist my rubber on that hard. But because I had Prosecco in the fridge, I thought I would use Prosecco. It's going to be a little sweeter. That's okay. It's going to kind of, again, talk about the sweetness with the onion. It's gonna give it a different flavor and that's okay too. Again, if you're a stickler to following the recipe exactly the way that it is, you do you. I'm gonna do Amy Talbot. Anybody who knows me, I'm a little wackadoodle and I'm gonna add Prosecco to mine. Now, I just wanna, again, throughout the recipe, I'm gonna pop in some different products that you might not know we had. One of them is our stoppers. And this is our stopper that keeps uh, things like Prosecco, uh, champagne, uh, anything kind of bubbly that you might open. It is the topper to keep your bubblies bubbled for four days. So it's really cool because normally when you add a wine stopper to something like this, you're not going to get that uh, bubbly. Now my bubbles are gone and again that's why I chose to use it and for this I am going to use two tablespoons of white wine where, as we know today, I'm gonna to use Prosecco. And there we go. So we've got a couple measuring spoons here. We have the kind that's got the slide. This one goes from one tablespoon right up to one and a half teaspoons. And we have this set that's got kind of the little um, stand on the bottom. So I can put that on the counter. I can pour in it directly or I can scoop right out of it. I have both because I'm a baker and do use lots of measuring spoons. Uh, is there a preference? Of course, anybody might have a favorite. 
I tend to grab this size because I'm one of those people that go, oh, okay, good, this is one and a half teaspoons. There's no thinking involved. This one is multi-use, multi-purpose. This one is just, again, convenience. There's no right or wrong. Again, you do you. So I've added the wine, and now I also need to add the veggie broth and the seasoning salt. So I have pre-done the veggie broth, and I'm just gonna add that to the recipe. And again, this is something that we like to prepare ahead of time and get it all done. The silicone bowl is here. Apparently I didn't have it ready, I forgot to hit start, so I'm gonna add that in a second. I stirred in the white wine, I'm gonna let that cook for 30 seconds. Now, anyone who is not aware, once you put alcohol into a dish, the alcohol itself burns off. So you're not gonna get drunk from this. Yes, your children can eat this. Uh, do you want to admit it if you have kids? You might want to. Again, the thing with wine is it heightens the flavor of certain product food per se. So what it is doing right now is this mixing with the oil is adding flavor to the veggies. It's not adding alcohol. You're not going to get drunk from this. But again, it's just adding that. So that's why I'm doing it, and that's why I, I've always added the wine to it. Um, my, my kids are okay, <laughs> just so we know. Oh, you know what I want to do is I do want to add mushrooms to this. I did mention that. So I just got some big white mushrooms that I picked up yesterday, and I am actually just going to put them in the quick slice, and I'm just going to slice these suckers down. And toss them in. Again, they're not Kiara's favorite, but Dave and I absolutely love them. So I am just going to add some big, nice, thick slices of mushrooms. I'm going to show you what this looks like, uh, how quick and easy that is. I just easily slice. I added two whole mushrooms and used the quick slice and slap that down. And for those of you who do know me and have followed me in the past, you know that the quick slice is one of my all-time favorite products. Uh, I use it all the time. It's not everyone's favorite, but for me, because I am a cook who likes to get things done quickly, again, convenience-wise, that just slap down two mushrooms. I also can do green peppers, cheese. I could do the grape tomatoes. I could do, uh, yeah, so bocconcini. So for cheese, I could do onions. All of that easily sliced in my quick slice. Now look at that pan right now. Okay, it's got the mushrooms, carrots, the peas, the grape tomatoes, and the onions with a little bit of wine. And now I'm going to add, no, 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 no. I'm going to add a half a cup of veggie broth. Now again, I am keeping this recipe I am keeping this one um, vegetarian. I am keeping this one gluten-free. And I am keeping this one as a low, oh um, uh, my goodness, I lost, lactose. So I have a bit of cheese that I'm gonna add to it at the end, which I'll show you. But I am adding uh, just a bit. Now again, if you are lactose intolerant, or if you are vegan, you would make your own cheese alternatives to that, absolutely. So I did just add a half of a cup of the veggie broth, and actually, like I said, I just used this. I had pre-stirred, uh, got my broth ready in my medium. So this would be the two cup silicone bowl. I poured half of a cup because it's a full on measuring right to that. And again, just used what I have in front of me. Again, I love the fact that I can use several different things for measuring, which is awesome. So I'm adding the white wine. I've added the broth. And I'm now going to add two thirds of a cup of heavy cream. So again, I'm going to use the lactose free uh, heavy cream. Again, just in my house, we try not to, if I can avoid some of the cream, I will. 
Um, I do love cheese. My family is cheese freaks. Um, if, if Linda's on here, she can attest to that. Um, so I am now just going to use our regular measuring cups. And I've just measured out two thirds of a cup and I'm tossing that in there. Okay. Stir in the cream, the broth, and the seasoning salt. Now, as I mentioned, with the, with the um, recipe comes each and every month the three recipes as well as the seasonings, which is awesome. Some of the seasonings that you're going to get, in fact, this past month uh, rest, uh, seasoning, are not available. You can't buy these. You also can't get this recipe on pamperchef.com. Some of you are going to want this recipe. I guarantee you're going to love this recipe, and I'm going to let you know how you can get it. So the seasonings for this past, for this very first month that it came out, were three onion, all-purpose dill, and seasoning salt. Now, all three of these I can get on the Pamper Chef site. Seasoning salt is one of them, so that's why I haven't opened the packet, because Pamper Chef carries the seasoning salt. In the seasoning salt, it is gluten-free, I will let you know, and in it has salt, celery, garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, and dehydrated garlic, dehydrated onion, and a bit of canola oil, just so that it doesn't all stick together. It's a lovely flavor, and because I already have it, I chose not to open the packet. Uh, so I'm just gonna actually use this, and I need uh, one teaspoon. There we go. I'm gonna use the half a teaspoon. And I need two teaspoons of the seasoning salt. So that's one teaspoon here and two teaspoons. So again, great opportunity to get your little ones possibly into the kitchen to kind of help you stir. Quick slice, amazing for little hands to push down. The blades are sharp. Obviously you wouldn't have them touch that, but to be able to put the mushrooms, for example, down here and push it down, the slices pop back up here. There's no harm here for little fingers. So I always had my kids kind of learning the basics into the kitchen so that one day they too could feed themselves. What a concept. Okay, so I've got that in. Uh, simmer until slightly thickened, which is about three minutes, okay? Now, in the meantime, what I would be doing normally, if you all weren't here with me, is I would be cooking the pasta. So again, I, like I said to you, wanted to be prepared, so I have gone ahead and I have cooked the pasta. So I have par-cooked it because I don't like my pasta very mushy, so I par-cooked it, I then drained it, and I then let it, I ran cold water over it to stop it from cooking so that when I do add it to the pan, it's probably going to be a bit sticky, but when I do add it to the pan, the heat of the vegetables and the sauce itself, the cream sauce that it's making right now, is then going to start to recook the noodles. So this is our collapsible pan, okay? It's not a collapsible pan. It's a collapsible colander that comes on its own or in a pan as a set. I'm gonna see if I can flatten it down, which I can. I can flatten it down a little more. You can see the depth there. It flattens flat completely. And what I love about this is A, it's great for storage. So for some of you who don't have a big kitchen and you're lacking the space, it's great because I can tuck that into it. I love that I can cook the pasta in the actual uh, strainer itself. So I put that right into a big pot, I cook it in it, I lift it out, I then take it to the sink, I then rinse it and leave it in here, which I think is great, not to worry about straining a big pot and hurting myself. But if I did wanna go that alternative and I don't have the pan, the actual pot that this fits in, and I have a great pot at home that I absolutely love, you put that sucker in your sink and you drain it into it, it's fabulous. And again, it's silicone so it can withstand the heat it can be used as both a colander and a strainer. 
And like I said, you can cook in it because it is silicone, it can withstand the heat. One of the other strainers um, is the, uh, this is a newer strainer that came out this past summer. It goes all across the sink. Because of that, I can, um, I can run water over it. So this is actually the colander that I use to rinse rice. It's a very, very, very low mesh uh, strainer. So it's excellent for the rice where it's just gonna get all the junk off of the rice, but not having the rice go all over the sink. Uh, today I actually um, warmed, thawed uh, shrimp for Dave. So when Dave goes and has his today, he can then toss the shrimp right into it. So I just uh, I just thawed the um, the shrimp solely just by running it under cold water. I will then heat it afterwards with our cutesy little absolutely couldn't live without frying pan. This is our non-stick set. Notice the handle came right off. Great for storing. Again, for those folks who don't have a big kitchen, who don't have a lot of, of drawers or a lot of spots for the pans, it's great because the handle itself is just stored inside it. It could pop out. The other thing about this is that the handle comes off for the uh, alternative use of putting it into your oven, which is amazing. This is my favorite size. It's the little... Um, eight inch it's because it's non-stick it makes the best omelets it's amazing and again this would be lifetime guarantee which is awesome okay so this is getting a little thicker as we go along i'm going to give it another couple minutes and i'm going to touch on a little bit about our seasoning so i did talk about our um seasoned salt for those of you who do know me well i do love epicure i'm a huge epicure fan um, shout out to our girl Stacy who um, gets us addicted to great seasonings and a lot of times Epicure and Pamper Chef make beautiful babies together in a, in a pot. But we do have some great seasonings here at Pamper Chef that I do want to touch on and the fact that Taste Buds gives them right to me to my door, love it. And some of the new ones that haven't even dropped yet are great and some other alternative ones that we're, get, that we're getting, for example this past month, that you can't even get which is awesome so some staples at my house that i love are the garlic and the three onion and these are flaked they're dry dehydrated so it's great i actually add the garlic to my pizza dough which next month uh, all the month of january i'm going to be doing every wednesday at one o'clock i'm going to do a recipe different from taste buds i'm going to talk about taste buds all month we're going to do a recipe together talking about these kinds of things Next month in February, I'm going to be doing baking. Um, one of the sessions that we, I am going to offer is a cake decorating class and or cookie and or cupcake. I haven't quite decided yet, but it's going to be baking in February, um, doing pizza dough, doing breads and those kinds of things. Uh, I do have a grinder, salt and pepper grinder. Um, we do have coarse Himalayan salt that I add to my grinder, and that's what I use when I salt anything. I just use my grinder, including my peppercorns. Those peppercorns, I believe, are the Epicure pamper, um, peppercorns. Just going to see if... Um, what's the fine mesh strainers on my... Which, <laughs> yes, the fine mesh strainer, that's a great uh, point. Linda actually pointed out there and said, to it's great for quinoa. Never thought of that. You're right. Anything small that you need to strain, that's what I found. Actually, when that came out last year, I thought, why do I need another strainer? And then I used it, realizing that because the mesh is so small, and we have a really beautiful uh, set. So this is the smallest piece of the uh, colander set, uh, the fine mesh set. And this is a small, we have a medium and a large. Great for salads, great for the vegetables, great for things like corn and potatoes when you're doing things like that. But when you need to... To, um, to rinse something small and fine, that sucker comes in amazing. And I love, uh, it goes across the sink. Now, of course, I have a 25-year-old kitchen, therefore I have a 25-year-old sink. Uh, it goes across my sink. So all of you who might have those beautiful new modern kitchens, the ones that I left in Whitby, um, it's not going across your sink. No, it's not, it's not going across your farm, your farmhouse sink, it is not. So, but it goes across mine. Okay, so I'm just gonna go back to the recipe and give you a sneak peek here of what this looks like. 
Um, uh, hang on, I don't want to burn myself. There we go. So it's all creamed together. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to add, now it asks to add lemon zest. I am actually going to do, not do the lemon zest because, you know what, I'll do the lemon zest. I was going to say I forgot to take out a lemon and I already feel bad that I say I'm prepared and then I forgot. Okay, so lemon zest. Here's a lemon and I'm just going to zest it over top. Okay, I'm going to bring this down to low. Actually, I'm going to turn it off because according to the recipe it says uh, remove from the heat and stir in the lemon zest. And so it just says a half of a teaspoon of lemon zest. So I am just going to use the zester right over top of it. And some of my customers who are out there who are waiting very patiently for the graters, that was one of the reasons I didn't want to rub it in because here is our grater. This is our fine grater, which I also will have used today for the Parmesan cheese. The graters come in both fine and regular. There's a little button here on the side. You just put your thumb on, you push it towards kind of away from you and it can fold. It can fold all the way down again for storage. I store mine lengthwise in my drawer. You can shred, you know, along with coarse cheese or fine cheese. As you saw, it can grate right over top of the pan. We do have a coarse grater for zesting, a very small narrow one. All of them right now are, um, we can't get them. We were back ordering, but they're so far back ordered. Uh, there's, a, there's an issue with the steel industry thanks to COVID and that's what's happening. So unfortunately, those of you, my customers, you know who you are, I know who you are and waiting patiently for them. I am an advocate to try to get those suckers back. So I did add the lemon zest, I'm gonna stir that in and now I'm gonna toss in the pasta. So I'm just gonna take the pasta and put it in and I can show you now how the colander is collapsible completely. It's amazing. It goes from, you know, all sizes, which is great. And like I said, that's how I cook my pasta is I just cook it right in here, right in the pan, taking it right out and rinsing it. So today I'm keeping my recipe, like I said, uh, gluten-free. This recipe calls for fettuccine noodles. I am using the linguine. Um, I love the, this brand of the linguine noodles. Um, and so that's, that's why I am using that. I mean, you can use any noodles. If you don't happen to have fettuccine noodles in the house and you happen to have any other kind of noodle, have at her. This one would be really, really good. Uh, we've used it with fettuccine. It's just, personally, I get an upset stomach with gluten. Um, and so pasta especially, and my entire family now um, prefers the gluten-free, so it's no, a no-brainer for us. And um, we just use that. And because the noodles are par-cooked, this recipe now, from start to finish, would have taken you 20 minutes. If you didn't prep and you were prepping along, the longest prep I'm going to say would have been to peel your carrot. Um, because the recipe starts with putting the carrot in the oil and starting that, while that's happening you'd be able to chop your onion, slice down your mushrooms or mix your mushrooms because again this recipe didn't call for it, I added it. It's a really simple, easy, fast, healthy and now I've got a dish that Dave is going to add shrimp to his. Piera is going to add chicken to hers because I've got some leftover chicken in the fridge. And I'm just having mine this way. I don't need to add anything to it. Now, there is a topping that they're asking us to do. And I am going to use it. It's a breadcrumb topping. So it kind of gives it a little crunch at the end of it. And again, I'm going to show you another product that I haven't talked about in the past. And this is our coated, and I'm going to push this down so you guys can see it. You don't need to see me. You can hear me well enough. 
This is our coated. Um, oh my God, I've lost my train of thought here. These are our trays for coating. Oh my God. Coating trays and tools. Okay, I am saying it right. Yes. So this would be when you're making something, they say meatballs or you're breading. These would be the trays for your breading. They all clip together. So you would have maybe the breadcrumbs in the center. You'd have the egg wash and then you would have the, uh, the third tray. They all clip together. You could clip them together this way as well. So if you want to do three way, it also comes with the tool so that you do not have to touch the chicken or the fish or whatever that you might be breading. Uh, if this is a really nice add on for anybody with an air fryer who might be making their own batter. Um, have you tried deep fried pickles folks? Have you tried cauliflower? It's so good. Um, and again, you would just be able to do that. So I wanted to just show you the coating trays today. And because we're making a breadcrumb topping, I thought this would be a really great one to do and to show. So I am, uh, I also want to note that these are all three uh, microwavable as well. So really great, like even if you're doing chocolate. So if you're doing coating of chocolate of even a chocolate covered strawberry or anything, you can warm the chocolate, say for example, in your silicone bowls, throw it in here, you find it's not that warm, you can put it in there. But what's really great is that coating all of this is unbelievable uh, and really, really simple to do. So the crumble topping, is a quarter of a cup of breadcrumbs. So I'm gonna use the panko breadcrumbs. I'm gonna use a quarter of a cup of that. I am adding a half of an ounce of finely grated cheese. So I am right now, I was lazy. I just bought the pre, um, the pre-shredded um, Parmesan, which I'm just going to add in here. And then you add a little bit more seasoning salt and it's one teaspoon. I have taken out the half a teaspoon, so I'm going to add two of the half teaspoons. Okay. And throw the lid on the floor and then I'm just going to shake it up. Now, again, I just, I, I just wanted to show you what the trays look like. The fact they all clip together. I love the fact that it has a little tool. But this extra little topping, you just add it, add the pasta to the skillet, com toss, combine the breadcrumb topping, and sprinkle over the pasta. So I am now going to do that, and then I'm just going to bring it over so you guys can see it. And dinner is done. And again, this is a recipe that would take about 20 minutes total. Had I not been talking and I'm gonna bring this over so you can see it there it is guys again you can add shrimp you can add chicken you can add different vegetables you got some broccoli already cooked cauliflower already cooked it's a beautiful and easy way to be able to do that so the few things that I do want to announce is uh, later this afternoon, I'm going to be doing the draw for any of you who did get into the uh, mystery bag. Um, I sold the 25 mystery bags. So I am raffling off two bags are going to be special. Uh, one is going to have an air fryer. The other is going to have the heated cooking blender. There seems to be interest for some more mystery bags. So if I see some more interest, I know I've got two so far who might be interested. Um, I might do a different set and get another air fryer and, and have an opportunity for people to get an air fryer. So for those of you who might be interested in mystery bags who didn't get into this session, um, let me know. The other thing that I would like to announce is that um, I am getting help from Martha Henderson. Uh, she has started a new business, a new opportunity. I am happy to say that uh, she's taking me on as a client to help with some of the behind the scenes things uh, like getting myself organized for mailing. So with doing my weeklies, I am also doing um, 
uh, a mail subscription where every Wednesday I'm going to be cooking. On Thursday, you would get an email with the recipe, including the Taste Buds recipe. You don't get these unless you are subscribed to Taste Buds. But if you subscribe to my email, if I've talked about the recipe, the recipe is going to be posted. I'm going to be featuring some of the tools that I talked about and some fun facts and opportunities for you to be able to get some more information. So I'm really excited about that and to catapult my business to just helping people. I'm going back to the basics of helping those who are struggling in the kitchen, whether it be with a recipe, with it, trying to feed the humans in your house 385 times in the day, um, or having tools in the house and you're not sure how to use them, or struggling with the tools that you do have and wanting to expand your kitchen. I have all the answers to be able to help you to do that. So I'm going back to the basics of just being me, cooking, baking, and helping my customers. So if you would like to come along and you would like to be part of the mailing list, please hit me up um, so that I can send you an email and be put onto the list. Uh, for those of you who do sign up for the list, for this month, the month of January, anybody who signs up and or has their friends sign up for the, e for the, um, the emails, I am going to give away next month, the month of February, you will get a subscription, you will get a one month packet of Taste Buds as a thank you to me for supporting my business, for helping your families out by getting some recipes, and just being part of a community that loves to just help and nurture each other with good, healthy food, easy tools that you can maneuver into your kitchen, whether you're old, young, have old, have young, doesn't matter. So for all of you out there this afternoon, having and being part of my community and watching me live, thank you for those of you who are watching the recording, recording uh, amazing, and thank you. Um, hit me up with any other questions. I'll go along and answer them this afternoon because um, it looks like I've got a few that I've kind of missed. So uh, thank you all for being here and I will see you all very soon, definitely this afternoon when I do the draw for an air fryer and a blender, which I always love to do. Giving stuff away is fun. So for those of you here, talk soon. Um, and we'll, we'll see you all soon.